Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel and if you're new, welcome. Today I'm going to be sharing with you guys a hemodialysis versus peritoneal dialysis. I'm going to share the differences and the similarities that they have together and at the end I'm going to be giving you guys my opinion in which I personally think is the best treatment plan and I'm going to be speaking strictly from my opinion because I did both of them and I do prefer one rather than the other so if you guys are interested and you guys want to see which one is possibly best for you then you definitely want to keep on watching this video but before we continue I want to quickly let you know who I am I'm Cindy and my YouTube channel is about kidney wellness travel lifestyle testimony Tuesdays and just a ton of stuff I love to share with you guys so if you're new consider subscribing so when someone reaches end-stage kidney failure there's usually two options that the doctors give you and those two options are dialysis or a kidney transplant and I'm going to specifically talk about the two types of dialysis which are hemodialysis and peritoneal dialysis let's first talk a little bit about hemodialysis what occurs with hemodialysis is you are connected to a machine and the dialysis actually occurs outside your body. And you connect yourself and your blood is gonna go through a dialyzer and then comes right back to you. This process takes about four hours, but the clinic time that you're usually gonna spend there is about five hours, I wanna say, because 30 minutes to hook up to the machine and then 30 minutes to come off. For hemodialysis, you are going to usually do it about three times a week, usually Monday, Wednesdays, Fridays, or Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturday. Hemodialysis is usually done at the clinic. However, some people do do it at home. It is possible. It's just not as common. If Usually when you're going to do an at-home treatment, they always recommend peritoneal dialysis. So now let's talk about peritoneal dialysis. And I'm going to go back to the hemodialysis because I'm going to be comparing them. I just want to quickly let you know about PD. So with PD, the dialysis is actually occurring inside your peritoneum cavity. So what happens is that you put some solution into your peritoneum cavity. The solution is called dialysate and just dwells in your stomach, pulls out all the toxins, all the things that are not supposed to be there, all the bad stuff. And then you just drain all the toxins out. There are two forms of doing this type of dialysis. There is a manual and an automatic. With the manual, you are doing this usually about four times a day and you're doing exchanges. Exchanges are basically, you're just exchanging the dirty fluid with some new clean fluid so it can repeat the dialysizing process. You are doing this about four times a day. It depends on what the doctor prescribes you. And then there is automatic and the automatic, it's the same thing. It's just happening at nighttime while you sleep, you hook yourself to a machine and the machine is gonna do the same process as the manual just at nighttime while you're sleeping. I have a video on my channel of me doing it when I was on dialysis. I'm gonna link it right here if you guys wanna check that out after. So now that you know a little of the two, let's compare them. So let's start out with the similarities. And honestly, guys, I cannot think of any similarities. The only thing that I can think of is that they both just filter the blood. In my opinion, these dialysis are very different. And I'm gonna start to mention why. And first, let's start out with hemodialysis. With hemodialysis, you are going to the clinic and you're usually going about three times a week, either Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. And this is about four to five hours of your day, sometimes less, depends on the prescription the doctor gives you. And you are going to the clinic. Also, catheter is different. For hemo, you either have a fistula or a permacatheter. A fistula is usually the most common type of port, and it's because a permacatheter is very risky, it's super dangerous. You can actually die from it if you get an infection. You cannot get it wet. It's just a very risky type of catheter to have. And I had that too for a couple months. I never got a fistula, but my time on hemo, I did have this catheter. But my doctors and nurses would always tell me like, please get a fistula, get a fistula, like please, because they've had patients in their clinic actually die from this catheter because it takes one second for you to get it wet and get an infection. And this goes right into the catheter goes right into your heart, so it's very risky. And then with the fistula, the fistula is when they connect 
an artery and a vein together and it takes about three months to heal and you are very limited to the arm that the fistula is on. If you have a fistula, you cannot lift more than 10 pounds and it's permanent. It stays there forever and this arm is very limited to a lot of things. You also can't have your blood pressure taken here and basically, in my opinion, it's just you kind of lose, it's like you're kind of losing an arm because it's super limited. Another thing I want to mention is diet. Diet when you're a chemo patient is very strict. You have to really follow a kidney restricted diet, meaning low potassium, low phosphorus, um, not too much protein, just a ton of stuff, you know, not too much fluids. It's super strict, especially on chemo, because you're only going to hemodialysis three times a week. So you're going to have your highs and your lows, and some days your body's going to be feeling great, but over the weekend, it could be feeling horrible because you're going two days without dialysis. So it's really important to really watch what you're eating and to make sure you're on a kidney restricted diet. Also one thing I noticed about hemodialysis is that you see a lot of older people pick this option because it's probably just easier for them to go to the clinic rather than trying to do peritoneal dialysis on their own and Probably if they have more illnesses, maybe it's better for them to be seeing a nurse three times a week and having closer care. But guys, I'm not saying older people cannot do PD because I've seen it happen and anything is always possible. So now let's talk about PD. So with PD, you are doing this every single night. Doesn't matter if you are doing manual exchanges or automatic. You are doing this every day, either four times a day or at nighttime, but it's an always you're always doing it every day. Some people say they feel better because they're having dialysis every day, but it really depends on the person and just how they're going about with the dialysis and how they're feeling and just a whole bunch of different factors go into that. Now let's talk about catheters. For a PD catheter, the catheter is placed into your abdominal area. I'm gonna be inserting a picture somewhere here. And this catheter is not permanent and what they do is basically just cut the, your abdominal area and they place the catheter in and the catheter takes about two weeks to four weeks to heal. I really recommend that you let it heal for four weeks because I've seen some doctors, they try to rush the healing process and they just say, oh yeah, you can use it after two weeks. But I always say you should definitely let it take its time and heal correctly. You get to kind of like have a little cheat here and there but just always still want to watch yourself I'm not say eat whatever you want because no that's still going to damage your creatinine and just your kidneys and just overall not healthy for you so diet wise you're on a on a more relaxed kidney diet also with peritoneal dialysis you have more of a flexibility compared to hemodialysis like i said hemodialysis you're going three times a week to the clinic but with PD, you are doing it at home, but you can cook on whenever you want to the machine. Say you go out and you don't get home until midnight. You can hook yourself onto the machine at midnight. Yes, you'll be getting off a little later, but you're no, you don't have to really worry as much as like, oh, I had to make my time slot at the clinic and I had to be there at this time and I need to rush. I can't do this or that because I have a specific time. No, PD, you work at your own schedule, but yes, you are doing it every night. One thing that comes with that flexibility of not going to the clinic three times a week is that you get to travel. And when you're traveling inside the United States, it's actually easy in the sense of they'll actually ship your stuff to whatever state or whatever city you are going to. They'll ship the, the machine and the fluids and all that stuff. So I'm not sure, I can't remember if they'll ship the machine. Maybe you have to bring your own machine, but they'll ship the fluid and it makes it so much easier um, compared to a hemodialysis. You can travel with hemodialysis. They'll just assign you to a clinic for the time that you are there, but you're like taking away from your vacation time rather than hooking up you know, to a machine while you're sleeping. Also with peritoneal dialysis, you do need to have some education on it, so you do take some classes before. They kind of just inform you about detailed stuff on the machine and also about the fluid, like cloudy fluid means infection and etc, etc. So you 
also get to gain your knowledge in some sense because they teach you a lot of insight on the dialysis before you're actually going home and doing it by yourself. You do also some practice rounds in the clinic and then I don't know if every clinic is different. Some clinics actually go to your house and make sure you are doing it correctly. In my case, I had my nurse come, checked everything, make sure everything was good. So it really just depends, guys, um, if you want that flexibility. And usually they recommend it to younger patients, but like I said, I've seen older patients do it as well. So now I'm gonna share with you guys my opinion in which dialysis I felt was better for me when I was on dialysis. So in my opinion, I preferred peritoneal dialysis 10 times more and I'm going to explain to you guys why. So with peritoneal dialysis, like I said, you have that flexibility of, you know, coming home, doing things at your own pace. You get to travel. I went to different states in the US when I was in um when I was doing peritoneal dialysis and I actually went to Mexico, but it was just hard because I actually had to pack all my stuff, my machine, my fluid. So it is possible for you to travel with it. Also, because the catheter for the peritoneal dialysis is that it's not permanent. And honestly, I think that's probably the, the biggest plus out of this is that it's not permanent. So if you get a transplant, you can have the catheter removed and all you get left is with the scar rather than when you're on hemodialysis if you have a fistula you are always living with that fistula and you are always going to have your arm very limited to it also another thing that i liked about pd is that i didn't have to drive all the way to my clinic three times a week which saved a lot of my time and a lot of gas and just worked a lot better for me another thing is that you have a less you know restricted diet like I said you still have to watch that diet it's just less restricted and I felt also better when I was doing peritoneal dialysis because I got to you know work out I got to swim in the ocean and get in the pool you know you just have to know like if it's like clean and stuff while in hemodialysis when I had the permacatheter I couldn't do none of that and overall, I just found it a lot easier because I felt like I could do it myself. I knew how to control like the amount of fluid coming off and just different stuff. Now, I want to tell you guys about some things I don't like about PD. And the doctors don't warn you about this stuff. They make everything seem fine and dandy and that you're going to be, you know, happy all the time. And this is just so much better. But I'm going to share with you guys some things that I didn't like. Number one being that you have extreme stomach pain. You have like, I I know for me, I had a ton of pain. Like my abdominal area was just always hurting. I It would hurt basically every night when I would cook myself on the machine. I don't know what it was. I guess my body maybe just wasn't as used to it because I honestly don't think our body will ever get used to something that isn't supposed to be there. Also, the drain is painful. They will make they make it seem like it's gonna go away and that oh it's just temporary, but no guys, the drain is painful and you're draining every night. So it's gonna be a quick temporary pain, but there's still some pain. Also, it's kind of sometimes hard to sleep when you're doing automatic at night because of beeps on the machine, light of the machine, and just different little things. Sometimes when you have to go use the bathroom. For me, the bathroom wasn't close by, so I would have to drag my machine at night time, and that would just like kind of wake me up. So I would always have a hard time sleeping. I would have to cover the, the light with a shirt. So it kind of takes away from your sleep, but it doesn't take as much like, I want to say probably takes away an hour of your sleep every night. Now that is an overview of the two treatment options of dialysis. I hope you guys can gain from this video and that you guys learned something. And now when you guys are picking your treatment options, definitely think through it, you know, take your time and pray about it. You want God to lead you in the right direction and choosing the right treatment for you. So thank you guys so much. I really hope you guys gain from this video. If you guys have any comments or questions, please leave them in the comments down below. Have a blessed and beautiful day, everyone. And I thank you guys so much for watching.